Okay, now the final one right that I wanted to talk about was actually a ResNet. Okay. So, this ResNet uh, is when did this come 2015. So, you can see a lot of activity right in that in that in that space of time and uh, ResNet it means a residual net okay. ResNet, ResNet right. So, this is actually so ResNet means a residual net. So, actually right, so, so ResNet is actually an interesting idea right. So, if you if you go and see okay what where is this ResNet let us go straight away jump to that ah, here. Again, again right I mean we just have to look at what is actually a key idea. So, the key idea is this block a residual block okay now you have what is called dense net now you would have you have a residual dense block now you have residual in in this residual dense block I mean after this right so many have come up again I mean so that is why right this subject beyond a point right you just seem to seem to lose uh, lose kind of control over it because right people just just keep on adding things and then something works and then you just have to accept it right. But the but then right this idea is neat see what it says is that I mean if I had something like you know HFX to learn okay if I if I if I had to learn this mapping from X to HFX right one way is one way is I just put a lot of layers learn that map learn that mapping. Now, what these fellows did well, one of the first thing that you observe is that this this group this was Microsoft at that time now this guy I think is with Facebook. Now, it is 152 layers right that means that means right you cannot even think about it 22 layers where was 22 and this guy talks about 152 layers. So, first of all you first think vanishing gradient right how do you even handle that. Then one way one way to one way to think about is just as just as in the other one right you had an alternate path right you would actually think that if you give if you gave an alternate path maybe you know maybe you could still you know make sure that the gradients do not tie down okay that is one thing. But then the point is right what what uh, what was actually found was see I mean uh, I mean if you if you just used a network right without 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 this kind of a residual block and if it is simply trained a 152 you know sort of a layer this one network right it would simply fail okay. The the one of the reasons is is of course you know definitely vanishing gradient okay. The the other thing right which which you might think is probably right with such a with okay so vanishing vanishing gradient I mean definitely with depth right this is a problem vanishing gradient. But then the second one which you think might be a problem is what if you have such a deep network what other thing can happen. Large, large parameter no, which will which will then mean that you are you are trying to write overfit right I mean you have 150 layers and it is like saying that I have a simple data that I need to fit and then I am putting a very complex function through it right which means that exactly to the overfitting problem that I am using a 9th uh, degree polynomial to just you know fit a few points right something like that can happen. So, that is what they thought probably is happening it is overfitting and therefore therefore it is not working but then what they realized was it was not working even on the even on the training data. See if it if it is overfitting, then on training it should do well. That's when you say it is overfitting, right? It's fitting very well to a training data and just fit so well. It fits so well that you know the moment you come out of it and give a give an example which is a little kind of say different, it completely fails. That is overfitting. That was not what was happening, right? What they found was it is not an overfitting problem because in the training error itself it was doing badly. Now, uh, now another reason right why what they were trying to offer was well why should it not work because if I had 152 layers then suppose let us say right imagine that actually 40 layers is all is all you need. So, one argument was why can't the why can't the other layers be a simple a simple identity right I mean you know why can't this network just just put 70 I mean not like in consecutive thing but then in between it they just become identity mappings. So, that if at all it needs only 40 layers maybe it should just use that 40 and then right rest of them should be just identity. Okay, now all these arguments were there. Okay, so 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 it so it just looked like then why it, why does it not work, right? But then this vanishing gradient, right, is is actually a first problem. Okay, that is definitely one of the problems. The the other problem was what to learn. See, right, this this is thing is very important. Okay, what should you what should you expect a network to learn? Because some other time, right, when I give you an application problem and I'll actually talk about what it means to sort of right even ask what should I learn, right? I mean, it can't be like every time I have a bunch of data, I just throw it into a block and then hope that hope that it learns. What should it learn, right? If you have a better clue of what to learn, then you know, it will it'll surely help your cause. In this case, right, what happened was so 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 this group right came up with this idea of a residual block. So what this meant is if you had to learn H of X. Okay, now they know the reason, right? The, the explanation that was offered to not being able to lay, you know, learn probably an identity mapping is because they said that you know there could be so many solutions possible, and probably the network doesn't automatically know that hey, here is a very simple answer to this. Right? It's not obvious to it. It may be obvious to you that hey, just just put identities in between, 
but then it is not obvious to it to the, to the network it is not obvious when it is solving such a big complex problem it is not obvious to it it looks like it is not obvious that it can find out the other answer which could be simply you know use, use simple identities apparently right that is again I mean these are all uh, these are all explanations right that are offered to sort of say as to why why this network right, was not working maybe the reason is that it does not know that the identities could simply be used in between. But what was actually clear was was this notion of identity which which emerged okay, from this from this idea that is 152 layers in between if you had identity right would it have worked. So, the so that word identity right came from there okay. and then the other thing which came was actually a residue. Okay. Now, this uh, this is a residual thing was actually well known in the, in the other community when you do a compression right image compression when you go from one image to another right. So, what you do is when you find out what has changed you do not code the whole image it does not make sense because you know if the, if the scene has not changed then why code the whole thing because it is exactly the same scene. So, you would only 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 find a change okay this idea was was kind of well known right in let us say a compression community and so on. But here okay they do not mention about that by the way right in the paper they never say that this idea came from there and all okay this is their argument the identity part then what they said was if you wanted to learn let us say hfx which is the mapping that you eventually want what they said was push and push push a skip connection this is called a skip connection that means you offer an alternate path okay straight to this output and then whatever is the output that is coming out of your network add it to this okay then what it effectively means is you know if this is some f of x right that you are learning effectively your hfx becomes you see f of x plus x right that is what your h of x is. Therefore, what you are learning so effectively what this network is now learning is actually f of x right that is what that is what this portion is. So, f of x is simply the original h of x minus x right that means a residue a residue between between uh, between the actual x and then the h of x that you want if you just learn sort of a residual it is enough rather than learning learning the say entire say h of x right. So, h of x I mean you will anyway get it but then through through a residual learning. So, this so this notion of residual learning came from here ok. So, you just, just learn h of x minus x that is far more easier than learning say h of x and this skip connection right gave it. Uh, so, this skip connection was given as an argument that if you wanted to propagate the gradient right there is now an alternate path for, for them to flow right because if they had to come in one line right then then probably it is not at all possible because it has to go through 150 layers. But now there are there are say alternate paths right which can which can which can allow for the gradient to flow right. Of course, you know this at all they, they eventually showed that all of this work right it is all easy to talk about it right? once somebody has done it is always easy right. But then you know but for somebody to come up with that idea and say that right residual learning makes a lot of sense and then and then you know this kind of identity. So, the skip connection came from there. So, the idea skip connection was first introduced right you know in this kind of a network ok and this one with 152 layers right they could make it work it was 3.5 percent right top 5 error. So, like down from 6.4 or something that you saw for uh, you know so for uh, Google net and you also see that uh, right it is it, it swept all challenges in fact at that uh, now at that period of time in 2015 segmentation detection whatever wherever wherever you throw this ResNet it would win and in fact this this is a ResNet also has uh, kind of you know there is a uh, I think ResNet 34 again right I mean it, ha it has again uh, depending upon the number of layers right there are various kinds of kinds of kinds of say ResNet. Uh, for your information right, I thought I will put uh, yeah, ResNet 34, ResNet 50, ResNet 101, ResNet 152, ResNet 152 is the one that went into that challenge. So, again okay, these ResNets you can again use them you can you can the feature maps that come out of them have been used heavily for uh, for you know for you know other tasks ok. Then finally right there is something called actually a dense net. So, this and already you will see ok this is all what I said already uh, ok this is a residue then I do not know whether this has a dense net ok no, well it does not have well uh, no a dense net right looks like looks like this uh, the final thing right that I want to just talk about was actually a dense net ok with this uh, right we will be done and uh, then a dense net right looks like uh, ok I thought I would have a figure right, to actually tell ok. So, so it goes like this right. So, you have an input ok and then let us say right you have a conf uh, ok you have a con block oh, you have a con block I will just take 2 minutes to finish this ok just just to right get you to know the idea then you have a concatenator you concatenate then you again have a con block something like this ok this is how a dense block would look like then you have a concat then let us say right you have a con and so on ok and then this this goes on then you have a concat ok. Now, what it does is 
right I mean what so so what it does is right every so uh, no a dense net right it is called dense net because it what happens is uh, so so this input right you actually concatenate with with let us say every other every other every other output okay so it goes from here and goes and concatenates with here again right the the, uh, the output from here for example right, after the first layer right this will actually concatenate uh, where is this this conf right so this will concatenate with this this will also concatenate with that and similarly right this will go right and then this will actually concatenate with that so so so, so the idea is that right you have okay these arrows are all like this okay pointing okay in that sort of a direction so so but but you notice that it's not an addition okay it's not a residue and that's it's a concatenation and it's called it's called dense because right i mean you know, it's going all over the place right from so wherever you are at the input right you have a skip skip connection to right every every output block then from the, from the first output block you have a skip connection to every 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 other output block and similarly you go on right till the end and this is called a dense block now this dense block uh, so uh, you know a network constructed like this is actually called you know a dense net and this was 2017 okay this is by huang this is like you know 2017 and this again right has has done excellently okay this is again another network i mean all these are architectures right that these people have sort of you know been able to be able to arrive at and this dense net again right has been shown to in fact uh, you know you know right, it's a, it's a kind of 50 layer okay and it outperforms resnet okay, this is just 50 layers by the way this is a, this is a 50 layer network and it outperforms 152 layer resnet on the same challenge again okay and uh, and then right following this there have been ideas where let's say people have used a residual dense block right this is like a dense block that is like a residual block i mean what do you think a residual dense block will be like you will have concatenation plus the addition okay you will have a residual learning you will have concatenation both kind of put together is actually a residual dense block what are called rdbs then people came up with residual in in this one residual dense block Okay, I mean, I mean, you can just go on and on and on, but I'm just saying that you know, well, one doesn't have to go into all that in a proper deep learning. You know, if you had the whole course for this, we could have done all that. But just, just, just want you to understand that, that right? These are the these are the main architectures right, which you'll encounter. There will be there will be things that that, that 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 let's say people built on top of these, but really, right? These are the ones. Okay, dense nets, rest nets, Google net, one cross one inception module, one cross one convolution. Right, all, all max pooling. Right, all these ideas are the ones right, that kind of led to various architectures. Okay, so I think with this, uh, whatever we had to cover under CNN, right, under this sort of a quick recap, right, we are done. And uh, next class we will do RNN, just one class, and after that we switch, we switch to uh, a traditional computer vision. Okay, so I'll see you on Monday.